Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Virgo for March 2014. So if Virgo is your sun sign or Virgo is your rising sign, then this is for you. Check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, or click on the link below this video to see more about my personal coaching sessions. Also, you can get my um, Foundational Astrology Education Series, which will teach you how to read charts, your own and other people's. It will teach you how to use an ephemeris, which means that you can track your own transits with awesome exactitude. Um, so check it out, and while you're there, sign up for my free, exciting email newsletter, where I will deliver all kinds of information about creating your perfect work, your highest destiny, your best relationships, etc. So check it out. So what's up for Virgo for March? March 1st starts um, us out with a new moon in Pisces. So for those of you who are into making wishes and having the chance that they'll come true, you get 10 wishes to make up for each new moon. March 1st is the new moon in Pisces, and you get 10 wishes for that uh, new moon. We also have another month where we have two new moons in a month. January was one such month, and March is happening again. It's, it's unusual that that's happening, but you get a second new moon, March 29th, the new moon in Aries, which starts out the astrological new year. Many people resonate more with the astrological new year, feeling new and fresh in spring and initiating and beginning of things, um, much more so than they resonate with the idea of a new year, the beginning of January, when everything is cold and weird and internal. So anyway, this might explain to you why you feel more of a new year resolution or push or ready to do something new um, when the sun goes into Aries at the end of March. In any case, March 29th is the best time of year besides your birthday to do a vision board to cut out pictures, essences of the things that you want to create for the year and putting them in one place, very much focusing on the feeling of having them fulfilled, um, and that plants the seeds, the seed planting time, for fruition for the rest of the year. So take advantage of that as well. So Mars goes retrograde March 1st through May 20th, and there are a lot of things that are not very much indicated when Mars is in retrograde. Many of the similar things that are not indicated when Mercury is in retrograde. So usually I would say wait till Mercury went direct, which it did on February 28th, which is still a little bit haywire in the beginning of, of March as it regulates its orbit. But so if you were waiting to buy electronics or computer things or cars or anything like that because Mercury was in retrograde, that was a good decision. However, you're not stepping into any better of a period of time when Mercury goes direct because Mars rules metal and machinery and everything. In some ways it rules a lot of the same things Mercury does for different reasons and then more additional things. So um, it's more of a time for going back over old things, um, redoing old things. If you have to buy, if you have to make a choice between buying a new piece of machinery and spending less to fix a part that you might have to work with again in the future, it's better to fix the part than it is to buy a whole new machine when Mars is in retrograde, if you need machinery for work or home or something, um, because you're not having the full power, zest of this Mars energy on your side ruling that machinery, and it will kind of be its birthday, so you don't want its birthday to not have its ruler forward, moving forward. Um, Okay, let's see what else. These retrograde times, which we have um, been in back-to-back -back since October and will continue back-to-back -back pretty much into July, are not the best times for initiating new things, but they are fabulous times for going back over old things, old ideas, um, bringing things you know, up, up, up uh, along the continuum, uh, works in progress, etc. So something that I've been thinking about for a while um, that I'm going to get more into now, starting with these March horoscopes, is a topic that will answer a lot of questions that you have and a lot of questions that come to me. So sometimes people will ask, why is one horoscope um, more accurate for my friend who is this sign than it is for this other person who is also that sign? Part of that is because there are so many possible manifestations of energetic potentials that any one astrologer may not have time to mention all of the subtle ways that something could be related to the transit. So that it's, it's very possible, probable, that 
something is happening from that transit for the person. It just hasn't been communicated from anyone for them to know that it's going on. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is that if you look behind me, this is the zodiac band, 360 degrees in a circle, 12 signs, 360 divided by 12, 30 degrees, 30 degrees in each sign. Then, so when you have, if you're reading, if you're watching this because Virgo is your sun sign, or Virgo is your rising sign, or Virgo is your moon sign, that sign, it, it's going to be a degree of the sign. So anywhere from zero to 29 degrees. So if you have an early degree Virgo, your ch the chart, your solar chart is going to look different than if you have a late degree Virgo. People who are cuspy, they always look to the sign before this. Okay, so for instance, if you are cuspy early Virgo, zero to 10 degrees Virgo, then the sign before Leo, that horoscope might have more things for you that could even be more relevant than your Virgo horoscope or added pieces that will piece us a bigger story together. So cuspy people definitely listen to this, the um, horoscopes and read the horoscopes for the direction that your cusp is in. If you're a late degree Virgo, then definitely watch the horoscopes for your for Libra as well, and you'll pick up pieces. If you're a late degree Virgo, and your astrologer, or the person that's doing the reading, is putting zero degrees of Virgo on this ascendant line, then that chart is going to look very different than your actual chart if you're a late degree Virgo. Your chart's going to look much more like that Libra chart. So this will solve many of the mysteries. I'm hoping, I know it's taking a few extra minutes for us to go over this now, but in the long run, for those of you who have been listening faithfully for all this time or who would like to do that, I really want to help you to, to learn more and to understand more and to get more out of um, the use of astrology and the resources that you have available to you. And this will greatly increase that for you. Okay, so cuspies, watch both in either direction. I will do my best now to start to talk about how the transits that I'm talking about are different for the early degree, middle degree, and late degree Virgos. Okay, I wasn't including that before because I try to simplify this information and it seemed like it might make it more complicated, but because of the questions that I get, I can see that doing a little legwork now is going to help us as a group together move through um, and deeper into this study. Okay, so now I'm going to start to do that. Um, so for early degree Virgos, oh, by the way, if you don't know what degree your rising sign, moon, or sun is at of Virgo, the way you can find out is if you have a birth chart, if you've ever had a reading, it will be on there. If you don't have a birth chart, you can do a search online for running a free birth or natal chart, and then you'll be able to put your birth info in and have a chart run for you. Then you can look at the degree of your rising sign, which is going to be in the 9 o'clock position if you were pretending it's 4 o'clock. That's only true if you have your accurate birth time. If you don't have your accurate birth time, you won't be able to find out what your rising sign is. But you will be able to get pretty close to your sun degree and your moon degree. Pretty close, depending on how close your, your accurate time is. Um, so for early degree Virgos, the sun is spending the first three-ish weeks of March lighting up your seventh house of relationships. So... You can think of the sun as a spotlight. It can spotlight on problems in the field of experience, or it can bring focus, or it can bring energy, or it can bring warmth. Um, there are all of these possibilities, and all of them are related to this seventh house. Now, this is the house of romantic relationships. It's also the house of any close personal relationships, business relationships, relationships with clients close personal friends, people, your neighbor that you have an important relationship with. Sometimes the sun will highlight one specific relationship that needs attention or that is bringing warmth to it, or it might highlight relationships in general. But for early degree suns, uh, I mean Virgo signs, this is happening. Also, that new moon in Pisces on March 1st will happen in that seventh house for you early degree Virgos. And that will bring new opportunities or a new relationship or a new level of an old relationship into um, your life. So for the middle degree Virgos, you've got the first, just very beginning of March, still in the sixth house. And the rest of March, everything I just said about the early degree Virgos will apply to you with the exception possibly of the new moon 
because it depends what your exact degree is, but that new moon is either going to be in your sixth or seventh house. For those few days that the sun is still in the sixth house, and for late degree Virgos, the first three weeks of March, that sun will be still in the sixth house, this brings continued focus on your sixth house of daily work, um, uh, diet, discipline, exercise, health, pets, um, your organization. If you have been having trouble getting organized, you haven't quite gotten it together in the new year to organize everything in your house, this period of time in March, the first few days for the middle Virgo degrees and the first several weeks for the late Virgo degrees will be fantastic for not just clearing out messes, but for putting a new structure in. The sun is only in your sixth house once, your solar sixth house once a year. So once a year you have the sun supporting putting new systems together where for the rest of the year it will be easier to keep everything clean and organized. So you can take advantage of that. Then um, and at the end of March that sun will go into the seventh house. Now for the middle to late degree Virgos um, where the new moon in Pisces on the first will happen in the sixth house, you could start a new exercise regimen or start on a new diet or um, have a new pet or something involving the sixth house or a new work project if you're self-employed or even if you're at work, something new might come onto your desk um, and it will usually be something that will keep you busy and usually would be something that you would like, I would think with this placement, but it's hard to tell. Okay, so for the early degree Virgos, Venus still has a few juicy, a few more juicy days in the fifth house in the beginning of March. The fifth house is the house of fun and romance and true love and hobbies. Um, so when you have Venus, which rules love there, it can make more of a romantic time or romantic opportunities or add harmony to that space for you. Or it could bring money to creative projects. Could happen. Um, or money involving something with children, spending money for your children or to help create children or involving a project involving children. Um, you might shell out some money to try to take a class that you have a hobby, you know, that, that is in accordance with the hobby you have. That would be fun. For the middle degree Virgos, that Venus will spend all of its time in March in the fifth house. So definitely plan to do fun things with your sweetie. If you're not on Travel Zoo, I really like Travel Zoo. Um, they have all kinds that you can get a local travel zoo for your area and they'll send out little specials, you know, um, wine and chocolate at this resort or whatever in your area. And then there's a lot of times really cool half price specials or things like that. Um, season passes to certain, you know, um, attractions and things like that. So this would be a really good month to subscribe to Travel Zoo and see what kind of interesting opportunities there are for a last minute um, adventure or something for you and your beloved, or going out on dates. So for the late degree Virgos, the first couple of days Venus will be in the fourth house, but then the rest of the time, what I just said about the fifth house will apply to you as well. Okay, so for the long-term transits that we've been talking about over time, Saturn, Jupiter, etc., what degree you have your Virgo in is going to make a difference as to what house these long-term transits are in. So over time, I want to spend more time getting into that. I know that we've already gone over pretty long here, but I do want to give you one example of what that looks like. Okay, so for... For the solar house of the Virgo sign, Cancer is on the 11th house cusp. So Cancer rules the 11th house. So if you've been listening to reports about Jupiter and Virgo, you've been hearing it be referred to as being in this 11th house. And for early degree Virgos, most of you, that is true, that it has been there for several months, even, even more, six or eight months. However, for middle degree Virgos, that Jupiter is still in the 10th house, um, for a little while longer, and for late degree Virgos, that Jupiter is in the 10th house 
until the summer. Wherever Jupiter is, it expands everything it touches. It serves as a fertile period of time that sets a precedence for the next 12 years in that field of experience. So it is important to know really exactly where it is for you, which, again, you can learn through my foundational education series. If you want to learn how to see, use an ephemeris, you can see exactly in your chart where this is to the exact degree. Because even though now I'm going into more detail with early, middle, and late, if you know your exact degree and you learn how to use an ephemeris, which tracks where all the planets were, are, or ever will be at any given time, then you can see exactly how long your transits are in your personal natal chart as well and your solar chart. So wherever Jupiter is, it expands everything it touches. So for um, you middle to late degree Virgos, this is a time of expanding your career, work, and life purpose. And the more you do now, the more you will set yourself up for the next 12 years. So it's really important. Many of you will be undergoing a, a new a job change or a career direction or setting off in a new direction within your chosen field. But if you think about what was happening 12-ish years ago involving your career, work, and life purpose, maybe you just finished school or maybe you just started a business or maybe you just went into a field or something, something notable will have happened in that period of time. And you're undergoing a similar thing where you'll look back on this time in the same way, like, wow, that was the beginning of this thing I've been doing for 12 years. So plant as many seeds involving the things you really, really, really want to do. Um, I often help, um, it comes up in many readings where people want to successfully live and work their passion. I do that, and I also help other people to do that. So you can sit, consider a personal reading with me if you're working on this. For um, the middle degree Virgos, you have a little bit longer, not quite as long in this 10th house as the late degree Virgos have to work on those career things. For the early degree Virgos, that time has passed now, and we're very much, you're very much having this expanded energy in your 11th house. Now, if you are doing anything online or can involve online things with your non-online business, then becoming an online guru or paying someone who is to expand your business into global um, uh, networks, this is a brilliant use of this Jupiter energy. Also, teams, organizations, groups, um, social things, anything you can expand, either personally, professionally, hobbies, interests, whatever it is, Jupiter can expand that space. For many of you, you'll just your number of friends and acquaintances will expand because this is also the house of um, friends and acquaintances. But the 11th house is also the house of dreams, not the dreams you have at night, but the big dreams that you have. So having the great expander in your house of big dreams, it's a time for going big or going home. Any of those things that you are afraid to reach for. Definitely in this period of time where Jupiter is, is in this position can help reawaken these big dreams that you have. So definitely dream big and know that you have a lot of support from Jupiter. Okay, so in the next readings upcoming, I will go more into some of these other outer planets and how their house position shifts depending on your degree. But that is something to look forward to in the future. And um, until then, if you would like a personal reading, we can do a lot in a short amount of time. Um, and I can definitely help give you clarity and direction and understanding and a very clear to-do list of, of how to maximize the positive uh, transits and to minimize the difficulties as best as we can. That's my department. Um, definitely sign up for my email newsletter and something that you receive with that is every month I will send out a written report of um, the upcoming month that is supplemental to the horoscopes, often including things that I don't really get into. So you'll get that monthly when you sign up for my email newsletter on the link below, at the link below this video. So I hope that you have a fantastic March.